democracy means justice, it means equality, it means liberty, it means dignity, the liberty to pursue their own happiness. So democracy is essential component in order for everyone to have meaningful and happy life. We need to have democracy. Yeah. My name is Mari Mira. I'm teaching political science at Sofia University uh, in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, my major interest in gender and politics and also actually welfare states. I have been working on welfare states and also actually labor regulations mm -hmm. uh, when I was a PhD student at UC Berkeley in the United States. And I wrote a dissertation about a Japanese way of establishing welfare states and in order to understand that, I realized that I need to understand the gender relations because in order to understand the labor relations, gender is really part of it. So employment and also family uh, is the two basic components of welfare states. And in terms of gender equality, Japan lags so much behind. And then I realized that in order to improve gender equality, uh, we need to have more women representatives in politics. So that's why I sort of moving from working on policy issues and gender equality issues to uh, women's representation in politics. I'm working on gender quota and a comparative work of gender quota and Japan doesn't have such a you know, legal uh, quota system. And then when I published an uh, edited volume on gender quota, uh, it was a comparative uh, a book, comparative study of gender quota. So we heavily used the database of a quota a project database. And then when I look at the database, IDEA's name is all, always appear on the top. So that's, I think, the first moment that I realized that IDEA has also involved in democratic accountability and also assistance in uh, democracy in the world, including uh, gender quota. Gender parity law was just passed in Japan in May 2018, and it was a private member bill, and then it has been almost, it took almost three years to pass this law, and I was an academic advisor to the parliamentary group uh, which prepared for this legislation. And originally, the parliamentary group wanted to introduce a legal quota in Japan because women's ratio in the lower house is only 10%. In Japan and the upper house that's there are only 20% so in order to improve women's representation it's very vital to have uh, some measures including quota and it's established understanding that gender quota is the most effective way to increase women's representation so parliamentary group wanted to introduce quota but that was quite difficult to legislate quota because there was a question of a constitutionality so, so in order to avoid the question of constitutionality, the parliamentary group ended up having a, just a, a principle law which doesn't have any sanction in it. So that's about a gender parity law. But the good thing is that it's about gender parity, it's not gender quota. So quota can take any, any number, any allocation toward women, it can take from 10% to 60%. But gender parity is basically 50, 50, or if you, you have a more loose interpretation, it could be 40, 60. Um, so gender quota, uh, it, it can be, well, some people in, in Japan argue that the quota is a reverse discrimination against men because that's special measurement to lift up women. But parity is more like a democratic principle and it's very hard, it's hard to argue against uh, the parity principle because the population is made up 50% men and 50% women. So that was easier compared to quota to convince uh, uh, conservative politicians to accept the, the gender parity principle. So gender parity law includes incorporated the idea and also principle of gender parity. So that was about the law and unfortunately it doesn't have any sanction in it. So now political parties has to, uh, should aim at fielding the same number of male and female candidates, but I'm sure that they fail <laughs> to, to meet this target, but there is no sanction in it. So important thing is monitoring system and the law doesn't speculate specific monitoring process. So 
what what is important is a more the pressure coming from civil society organizations toward the party and also including media to to institute some sort of monitoring process and I'm quite eager and keen on establishing instituting a new monitoring process to make this gender parity law more effective of course we are looking at always the best practices of other countries and the neighboring countries also India's data set or database and also publication was extremely helpful helpful for us uh, as academia also civil society groups to understand what sort of measures might work uh, in Japan as well mm -hmm. so 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 now we have a basic principle of gender parity so that's a shared agreement or consensus in the Japanese society and the politics to achieve as a target a gender parity so next step is that we have to find some other ways to achieve this goal so we look around other countries cases and actually I came to Stockholm here to learn from India and about other countries cases and, and what sort of tips or good measures uh, can be introduced in Japan and uh, cabinet uh, office of Japan Commission study uh, about other countries' good practices, and they decided to study uh, UK and, and France this year. They might include more other countries next year, but that's why I came to London and also Stockholm to study other con other countries' uh, best practices. And one thing that we need to do is to change uh, public election law. There is a gender parity principle that was about gender parity law so in order to make it more effective we need to change some other laws including public funding and also public uh, electoral laws that's the next step and we are learning other countries you know good measures and how to change the law so democracy is essential component in order for everyone to have meaningful and happy life we need to have democracy yeah